Hello, this is Scott. So this is the third piece of a series that I've done on HEDIS. The first one was a high-level view of technology considerations that you should look for um, for analytics within HEDIS, uh, tracking HEDIS. And then the second piece was a more in-depth piece on the visual analytics. And then with this piece, I'm going to go a little bit further on the predictive analytics. So what I have here is I have I'm sourcing data in with this with this canvas and building predictive models for HEDIS. And so I'm sourcing data from a Microsoft SQL server and I can see that I have medical record number, the primary care um, physician ID, I have the primary care uh, specialty, medical affiliation, um, educational affiliation, whether it's in MD, NP, PA, et cetera. So I've got several different variables, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use those variables. I've got things like zip code, the diagnoses, um, and then I have the HEDIS outcomes, right? So hemoglobin control, hemoglobin A1C control, eye control, uh, neuropathy, and uh, uh, blood pressure, foot exams, et cetera. And then I also have who their care manager was, what certification their care manager had, if they had one, um, medical compliance um, with designated by the care manager, uh, the number of months that they've been under care management, things like marital status, gender, tobacco use, et cetera. So a lot of different predictors, but in the end, I wanna predict whether um, we're gonna be successful with this with this patient. So um, what I've done here is, and I won't go through every one of these, it's a little bit much for this um, particular video, and I may do one a little more in depth at some point if there's, if there's questions, if there's some um, people wanting to see more in depth. But the, but the point here is that I can use these canvases and I can reuse these um, and train up models. So here I'm just reformatting some data. I can do that, that kind of stuff on the fly. I can look at visual relationships on the fly. So what I'm doing here in particular is I'm looking at the relationship between eye exam and no eye exam. That's the categories here, the two circles. And then I'm looking at a simple regression equation um, for age and BMI, just as an example. Uh, the kind of things that you can put on the, the canvas and get an idea of. But where the real meat is, is creating these, these advanced models. So here I'm, I'm generating a cart model and, oops, excuse me. And so hopefully you can, you can see what I have. A tree model is such that, um, and I won't try to educate you or you may know what tree models are and we won't go through that. But these are predictive models that use the, the predictor set that I was just talking about, for example, whether they had a care manager certification. And then the, the data itself trains up these, these models. And these are essentially like decision rules where the care manager certification um, is either ACM or CCM. And if that's so, then the patient is designated into this grouping or if it's unknown, it's put into this grouping. Likewise with the medical compliance, yes versus no. And what's happening is we are pushing down the tree and we're looking for purity here or um, essentially trying to separate the, the, the goods versus the bad or people that had eye exams versus people who didn't have eye exams. So the the zero is magenta. These people did not have eye exams. And you can see these are, these are the distribution here for, for that versus ones where people did have eye exams in here. So we kind of start out with this distribution and then we cascade through the tree. And you can see here, for example, on this node, there's a much higher distribution of people that didn't have eye exams that did. And so what you could do once you train these models up is you have a new set of data that you want to score out, well, there's two things. One is that you can score new 
new observations, and that's certainly important. Um, for example, if I'm going to build a clinic in a new zip code, or if I'm going to staff with more um, case managers, or I'm going to manipulate the variables in some way, I can actually score that and look at what those what those impacts are. And then the other thing that it allowed me to do is it allow me to look at the importance of the predictors themselves. So zip code, where someone lives, is, is very important to determining whether they have an eye exam or not. Whether they have a care manager is very important to whether they have an eye exam or not. Medical, whether the care manager thinks that they're within medical compliance or designates them, that's of course very important. So I can use these different predictors and then I can score out um, a new set and I can do all sorts of pro forma a modeling. I can look at what the impact of these different predictors have and I can ultimately improve my HEDIS breaks, which is the goal um, certainly of any HEDIS program. So hopefully that was meaningful. I know it was pretty quick, but if you have questions, you can reach me at one of these email addresses um, at work or um, where I teach. So thank you very much.